new NBA Plus stuff podcast. You can find it in the description. Talked about some young players for the Raptors who intrigue me. Jakub Pertl, Pascal Siakam, OG Ananobi talked about their potential. Then I talked about some Oscar potential movies this year that I watched yesterday. Call Me By Your Name, Lady Bird, as well as three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Here we are again. The playoffs. Two years in a row for the Knicks. I think that's a good thing. But of course, we have some higher aspirations as we made it past the first round last season. But this opponent in the Philadelphia 76ers is going to be difficult. Now I'm going back to this game against Miami to highlight the Przingis at center lineup that we had in Miami was very confused on what to do. And the question is, is this going to work against the Sixers? Because, number one, Embiid's a better defensive center than Whiteside is, but also Embiid can make me pay for putting Porzingis at center because he's a really good low post scorer, whereas Whiteside is not. So that's going to be interesting if we're going to have the luxury of doing that versus Joel Embiid. As for our defensive strategy... I'm just going to dare these guys to beat us with jump shots. That means lay off and beat at the three-point line, go under every single pick and roll involved with Ben Simmons because these guys are fantastic around the rim, and if they're going to beat us, I'd prefer it to be with jump shots more than anything else. Now, I mentioned the game sliders before. Might as well go through them here. Um, You know, if you're going to use these yourself, I mean, just pause at any moment. Now, the one thing I will say with these is, for whatever reason, it seems like 2K released a a patch a while ago at this point now that made the game more difficult, which was good, but it doesn't feel like it's really made a difference in my league mode. Now, that might be real. That might just be because I run actual plays here, so I find ways to still score against the CPU. I don't know. I'm just saying that Part of me feels like 2K just didn't update the gameplay of my league because we wouldn't be shocked if 2K did that. Anyway, third quarter against Philadelphia. Corey Joseph knocks down a three-pointer immediately. So there goes my idea of leaving him open. Although I didn't realize that Corey Joseph was on this team at that time. So, I mean, there are some guys we have to defend on this Sixers team. Robert Covington seems to not be here. J.J. Redick isn't here, so... I don't know, but there's also Cameron Reddish, who is a knockdown three-point shooter for them at this point. I'm surprised they got Reddish. That must have meant that they were pretty bad for, like, probably an extra season than they should have been. But uh, we're down four points, so we got to figure something out. The lineup we have in is not one that really screams scoring. I mean, Przingis is in there, so that's cool. But besides that, I mean, Ferguson, he, well, he can make these sorts of shots, and that's what he does here, thankfully. We don't have a lot of creators in the game right now, so it can be a little tough to score, but we do also have Perzingis and Farid, which I would like to believe is a pretty decent defensive um, front court. Markel Fultz shoots a jumper. If you've seen recent video of his jumper in that ongoing saga, it's weird, man. It's very weird, and Danny Ainge is laughing the entire time it's all going on. I'm sure Danny Ainge doesn't laugh at the misfortune of players, but there's got to be a little part of him that goes, well, that worked out well. So, anyway, tied at 69 all. A double team on Mark Hilfoltz. Has he shot the ball every time so far? I think he has. No, he hasn't. Corey Joseph shot the first shot, so. But it, it seems to be the Fultz show so far. We'll see what happens when Simmons and Embiid are back in there. Actually, Simmons is in there right now, so... I mean, if Ben's going to be taking more of an off-ball roll, then that's going to make it easier to defend them, you know, because I can leave him open because I don't think he can shoot. So, yeah. Anyway, DeAndre misses a shot that he probably should have made. This is a but um, a tie game going into the fourth quarter. I definitely go to the Przingis at center lineup soon. He's not in the game right now because I was resting him up for that lineup. You'll notice uh, Terrence Ferguson not in the game either. And uh, Neil Aquina Hardaway are in there, but they've been sitting for a while, so I think they have the stamina to make it work. That was good by DeAndre, bailing himself out for the one he missed a little bit ago. You could have even said that that one he just made was tougher. So, there you go. Fultz once again open. I have Norman Powell on him. 
Doesn't seem to be really working, but it's going to have to work because Powell is our best defender. Well, Neil Aquina might be our best defender, but I need Neil Aquina's stamina for plays like that one. I can't just put him on Markel Fultz all day because then he's going to tire himself out too much. I need him on offense. Fultz, he could have shot the long two-pointer. The basketball nerd in me appreciates that he didn't. Although the shot that he eventually did get wasn't too efficient anyway because we were playing some decent defense. I don't know why I threw that pass. I think I was hoping that that shot should have gone in. Okay, Jonathan Simmons should have made that one. But I think I was hoping that, I think it was DeAndre and would have gone more to the left side of the floor, but instead he just kept on going down the middle. But I should have expected that he would do that anyway. So that was pretty decent defense by Philadelphia. Uh, Sarge backed up and then Embiid slid over, but Kenneth Fareed, man, he's a lob target. And the Perzingis at center lineup is officially in the game, and right on cue, Joel Embiid makes me pay for it as he beats Perzingis one-on-one. Embiid's only attempted seven shots. What the hell was that shot? Okay, you know what that was? I thought Perzingis was going to be closer to the three-point line than he actually was, so I ended up taking like a Steph Curry versus OKC style shot. Hopefully I don't do that again. But Embiid, well, I thought he was going to shoot there. He eventually takes Perzingis down into the paint, and that's when I have to make some decisions. A makeable shot for Ferguson didn't go in, but whatever. I ain't mad at it. And, I mean, Simmons is very open. Didn't really want to shoot it and decide to pass instead. We're both making bad passes, so now I don't feel as bad, you know? I appreciate the CPU for making the same exact mistake that I made, so that's cool. I'm trying to run a play here. Jonathan Simmons does not want me to score with Hardaway, but eventually we get it in anyway. Sometimes an isolation is the way to go, you know? If the other team's defending off-ball movement well and they're getting around screens, sometimes just going one-on-one, that can actually be a viable thing. It's weird. I feel like NBA teams nowadays are not using isolations enough sometimes. Anyway, here's Embiid on Perzingis and that, there you go. So... That's already one moment right there that I did fear that Embiid would just be able to go at Przingis in the low post. I wanted Nilakina to cut and take advantage of some spacing, but Ferguson was in the way. Bad spacing once again there, but I guess we worked out for us. We are not the Golden State Warriors in the sense of we can just improvise and we can figure things out. Typically my improvisation play is, hey Przingis, go do something. So, to get anything out of that possession with Ferguson, I'd say that was pretty good. Shout out to the ref for making that call. Four point game, minute and a half. The ball's in Simmons' hand now, which means that makes them a little tougher to defend. Although I'm still going to back up on everything he does. But that's the right idea for what Simmons should be doing. I also allowed Jonathan Simmons an open three, because I just kind of dared him. I played the percentages, man. I thought of, well, okay, what's, what's, what's a better chance? Ben Simmons scoring in this one-on-one with a bunch of momentum going towards the basket or Jonathan Simmons hitting a wide open three and I guess I went my brain decided that Ben was the one I should have doubled anyway Przinga scored so we get Embiid back there but if I'm not mistaken they go to Embiid in the post and um this is about when I realize that at times we just need DeAndre Ayton in the game Because Joel is kind of killing Przingis right now in the post. And that's the thing, right? Like, just because you put a perimeter-oriented center out there, that doesn't mean they're necessarily going to win the matchup. I mean, I missed a three with Przingis and whatever the hell else happened. We did win one pick and roll, we should say that. But I think it would benefit us to have DeAndre and to defend Joel Embiid. Embiid is still defending Przingis, though, which is kind of interesting. I don't know if I really agree with that one, because Embiid should be better around the basket, but... Hey, you know, whatever. One point, because DeAndre Ayton missed. Markel Fultz is taking a lot of shots in this game. Kind of makes sense, because that's what he's been billed as in the NBA, is more of a shooter, you know, kind of like a Kyrie Irving, Damian Lillard sort of point guard rather than a whoever. I go for the two for one. That's the reason I shot that. Luckily, DeAndre Ayton gets the rebound, so, well, that... Another reason to put DeAndre Ayton in the game is he grabs rebounds, and offensive boards are an underrated part of offense. And I think NBA teams, on top of sometimes not going isolations enough, 
They don't put as many offensive rebounding teams or lineups in the game. Or they don't tell people to just go nuts on the offensive boards because it can help you out as it did for us right there. Three points. This time, I remember to put the defensive lineup in the game. I got Norman Powell, I got Jeremy Grant. He's still on the team. He doesn't play, but, well, here he is. He's a defensive specialist for us. He's like Amon Shumpert. So, what are they going to do? Cameron Reddish is the one inbounding the ball, so I decided to switch off of Jeremy Grant. And Fultz totally could have shot that right there. Luckily, he did not. I got to step up on Reddish. I can't give him any sort of three-point opportunity. I mean, if Embiid wants to post up, I'm still going to bring the double, but even if he scores, only two points, you know? But anyway, some decent defense. They had Millsap in the game, which I don't agree with because he can't knock down threes. I only need one from French Frank, and we are going to escape game one with a W. And that's what happened on that one. I believe I have the free throw difficulty turned up a little bit because you'll notice it's always like in the 70s or sometimes even in the 60s in the percentage. So that feels pretty good. Game one victory over Philadelphia. Hopefully they beat us a couple of times because I'd like to have a challenge. But I still want to win, of course. And uh, once again, new NBA Plus Stuff podcast. Talked about the Toronto Raptors young players, OG Ananobi, Jakob Pertl. And Pascal Siaka mainly. And then I talked about a couple of Oscar potentials with uh, Lady Bird, Call Me By Your Name, and three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. That's in the description.